With the concept of infinite multiverses, there is most likely a version of me that is lazy and spends all of his days sitting on the couch doing nothing. Also, I like to think that maybe there's a multiverse where I gained superpowers, and he used that ability for good or evil. Honestly, I could go either way. In the DCU, you don't have to imagine what the multiverse is like, though. Many storylines have introduced hundreds of different universes, including a world very much like our own, a place where there are no superpowered beings that fight crime on a daily basis. Until one day, you're introduced to a being from beyond our galaxy. So sit back and allow me to tell you the history of Superboy Prime. In the DCU, the Earths are generally numbered, with the idea of Earth Prime first being introduced in 1968 in Flash, number 179. Earth Prime is the keystone Earth that all of the other Earths in the multiverse are based off of. On this Earth, superheroes are nothing more than characters in comic books and movies, with the idea that writers subconsciously become aware of the exploits of heroes on other Earths. That is, until 1985. In DC Comics Presents, number 87, we are introduced to Kal-El, when his father, Jor-El, discovers that their planet of Krypton will be wiped out by a solar flare. He develops technology that will allow him to teleport genetic material across the galaxy. When the Kryptonian Council wouldn't listen to his ideas on how to fix it and save everyone, he and his wife, Laura, teleported their infant son to Earth. When Jerry and Naomi Kent find the infant alone in the woods, they do what any sane people would do. They adopt him with Without question, the couple decided to name the child Clark because apparently they wanted him to get beat up on the playground after being named after a comic book character. Clark wouldn't have powers until he was 15 when the passage of Haley's Comet would manifest his Kryptonian heritage. It was during this time that the Earth-1 Superman, the real Superman in canon at the time, would arrive on Earth Prime. The two meet and have some adventures with Superboy learning from Superman. After Earth Prime was destroyed by the Anti-Monitor, Superboy takes part in the Crisis of Infinite Earth event, fighting alongside Earth 2 Superman despite being told to run. They are able to defeat the Anti-Monitor, saving the rest of the multiverse. After these events, the multiverse would be compiled into the New Earth, the current reality where canon DC comics take place. It held the aspects of Earth 1 with a little bit of Earth 2, 4, S and X sprinkled on top. Alongside other heroes that have lost their worlds, Superboy is brought to a paradise dimension to live where reality would alter to their very whim. However, Superboy can't let go of the world that he once lived on and it slowly begins to drive him mad. Using this anger, Alexander Luther of Earth 3 convinces him that he can't stay in the paradise dimension and the new Earth was imperfect, that they should create a perfect Earth and they should rule it. Then, to be really mean, he shows Superboy the deaths of his parents on the New Earth. Even though they aren't his parents in this one, it still really pisses him off. Superboy becomes so angry that he begins to punch the very barrier of reality, sending ripples throughout the multiverse that alters time, with the best still being bringing back Jason Todd. Arriving on this new Earth, Superboy did some crazy things, like moving the planet Ron closer to Thanagar, and then starting the Ron-Thanagar War, wiping out all magic, and destroying the JLA Watchtower. Alexander Luther also created a tower that would draw Aspect from dead Earths back into reality. Eventually, Superboy arrived in Kansas, where he met Connor Kent, the Superboy of the main universe at this time. Shockingly, Superboy Prime wasn't really a fan and believed that Connor Kent wasn't worthy of the name Superboy since he was just a clone. The two of them fought with the destruction bringing in the aid of the Teen Titans, the Justice Society, and the Doom Patrol. Yet Superboy Prime was too strong and killed several heroes before he was locked away in the Speed Force by Bart Allen, Jay Garrick, and Wally West. As is the case with most comic book villains, Superboy escaped, now clad in anti-monitor armor that gave him a limitless supply of solar energy. While the heroes are trying to stomp Alexander Luther's tower, Superboy Prime reappears, and he tries to kill Wonder Girl, Connor's girlfriend, forcing Connor to attack him. Once again, locked in battle, Connor Kent throws Superboy Prime into the tower, hoping to destroy them both, and the resulting explosion does nothing to Superboy Prime, but Connor dies from his wounds. Now unable to create their perfect Earth, Superboy Prime and Luther separate, with Luther planning on just taking over the regular Earth. Superboy flies towards Oa, though, with the idea that if he destroys it, it will result in the second Big Bang that will make a new reality where he is the only hero. So he's gone full-on crazy, like that plan doesn't even make sense. It's kinda crazy, everyone! 
The Green Lantern Corps try to slow him down, but this doesn't phase him, and he kills several lanterns. Finally, Superman and Earth-2 Superman, Kal-El, but spelled K-A-L-L, not K-A-L-E-L, like our Kal-El, arrive, and they fly into Krypton's Red Sun, destroying Superboy Prime's armor and weakening all three of them. Crashing on Mogo, the living Green Lantern planet, the three weakened Kryptonians continue to fight, with Superboy Prime still able to defeat and kill the older Kal-El before Superman of our Earth can finally defeat him. Defeat it. Superboy Prime is taken into custody by the Green Lantern Corps and placed in a cell surrounded by Red Sun Eater energy and guarded by the Lanterns. As crazy as ever, he carves a Superman symbol into his chest. I assume this act will come up in his parole hearing, but I'm not up on my intergalactic law. Superboy Prime would then be freed during the Sinestro Wars, joining the Sinestro Corps with an overall goal of getting revenge for the destruction of his Earth. In the final battle, Superboy turns on the Anti-Monitor, himself a Yellow Lantern, after he is wounded by the Green Lanterns and kills the Anti-Monitor. Fighting both the Yellow and Green Lantern, Superboy Prime is finally defeated when a Lantern sacrifices himself. But Prime didn't die, still! Instead, he was empowered with Owen energy and launched throughout the multiverse. Now, Superboy Prime searches throughout the multiverse for his lost Earth, and unable to find it, he becomes angered and destroys Earth-15, blaming its Alexander Luthor for the mistakes of the one that he knew. He then kidnaps Mr. Mixopitalik, trying to force the Imp into helping him make a new Earth Prime. And when this doesn't work, he seeks out the Monitor, threatening the being if he doesn't help him find his Earth. The Monitor points him to Earth-51, telling him that it is the Earth that he seeks. Arriving there, Superboy Prime finds a world World ravaged by the monarch. The two fight and Superboy Prime is almost killed again. But before he is killed, his anger takes over and he destroys the monarch, with the resulting energy explosion wiping out Earth-51's multiverse. Prime would then be pulled out of time by the being known as the Time Trapper, who sends him to the 31st century with the purpose of defeating the Legion of Superheroes. Time Trapper is a reoccurring Legion of Superheroes villain. Already mentally unstable, Prime learns from the Superman Museum that he barely pops up in history. Enraged that he decides to become a bigger villain for the history books, and he sets out to create his own Legion of Supervillains. Later, it's revealed that Time Trapper is actually Superboy Prime, who has become almost a more after being defeated, the two are brought face to face. Both of them being real big jerks, they can't help but argue and they begin to fight. As they touch, they create a time paradox and both of them are destroyed or are they? Superboy Prime isn't actually destroyed. The paradox merely throws him back to Earth Prime, giving him exactly what he wanted all those centuries ago. Except the people of Earth Prime have been reading about his exploits in comic books and they've become afraid of him. So he now lives in his parents' basement collecting comic books and posting on message boards. And if you look closely, you may see him in the comments down below. All right, everyone hold on because it's about to get real meta. Now, during the Blackest Night event, Superboy Prime is dismayed when his death is predicted at the end of the next issue because he's reading the Blackest Night event. Very meta. When he travels to the comic book store to find the next issue and his apparent death, he's attacked by the Black Lanterns, many of those that he had killed throughout his history. Flying to the DC Comics headquarters on Earth Prime, he decides to kill the writers who wrote his death confusingly in a I'm going to take you with me kind of scenario. Before he can do this though, he's teleported back to his basement where the Black Lanterns are destroying his comic book collection, which is straight up evil! In complete despair, which I understand I would be too, Superboy Prime puts on a black ring, which starts sending him through the emotional spectrum. The strain is too much for Superboy Prime and he passes out. The ring shatters and the white light destroys the Black Lantern. Prime hates what he's become and wishes only for his happy ending. His former girlfriend Lori arrives and tells him that they heard him and they will leave him alone. It is implied that they are the DC writers, but we're never clearly given that definitive this is who they are. You would think that this would be a ludicrous ending for the character, but no. Even though he wants to be left alone and the DC writers said they would do it, he's brought back into the regular universe by the villain Headcase during a battle with the Teen Titans. Superboy Prime forgets everything that happened to him in the previous plots, and he vows to destroy the Teen Titans again for separating him from Earth Prime and Lori. Prime once again gathers together a group of supervillains, but is ultimately defeated by the Teen Titans. In the end, he's locked away inside of the Source Wall, never to be seen again. 
Or is he? There's a lot of theories going around right now that Superboy Prime may be making a return finally. But either way, this is a fan favorite character. He's insanely powerful. He's able to shatter reality. He's traveling through the multiverse and all of it stems from him being a super boy and not being able to accept that ultimately his universe died at one point. Either way, what do you think about Superboy Prime? I know there's tons of comments we always get asking about Superboy Prime storylines, and maybe we'll cover some of these stories, but I wanted to give you guys a once over, just in case he does actually show up soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this Know Your Universe, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get Know Your Universe on every Thursday and various comic book complete stories on every other day. I'll see you next time right here.